for today, we are going to learn about quantitative data analysis. Now that you're done collecting your data, it is time to analyze them. I hope you keep on watching as we start. Okay, to start with, let me show you these figures. What comes to your mind when you see these symbols? Maybe there are some difficulty in your mind. You see it hard. But let me assure you that for quantitative data analysis, with the help of our statistical tool, your analysis will be easier. The objectives of our lesson are the following. Explain the different procedures involved in preparing data for quantitative analysis. Describe the different ways of organizing and presenting quantitative data and use statistical techniques to analyze data. When these data appear set in words, images, or pictures, but in numerical forms such as fractions, numbers, and percentages, they become quantitative data. Now, we are going to learn steps in quantitative data analysis. The first step is you prepare your data using coding system. When we say coding system, we convert the words, images, or pictures into numbers that they become fitted for any analytical procedures. Data entry or data recording, that means to say you transfer information from questionnaires or code sheets to computer files for processing. For large complex studies, we use the aid of statistical package for the social sciences. We call it as SPSS. For smaller data, Microsoft Excel can also be used. Graphs and charts. One criterion for deciding on the most appropriate type of graph or chart to use depends on the type of data that you have collected. We have different types of data such as nominal, ordinal, interval, and array scale that we have already discussed for you. And here are some examples for you to review upon those types of data. For nominal, you could use bar graph and pie chart. For ordinal, you use bar graph. And then for interval and ratio, you could either use histogram or frequency polygon. The second step is data tabulation. When there are frequency and percentage distribution, we use a data tabulation. Here's an example, gender, core, school, other variables, and then you could find the percentage of male respondent who participated in your survey. And you do the same for the rest. Step two is analyzing the data. There are two different ways to analyze your data depending on the purpose of your research. If it is descriptive, then we use descriptive statistical technique. If it is correlational research design, experimental research design, comparative research design, and so on and so forth, then we use advanced quantitative analytical methods. Now let's go first to the descriptive statistical technique. We have frequency distribution, measure of central tendency, and then standard deviation. When we say frequency distribution, this is where you determine the number of responses given repeatedly for one question. Okay, measure of central tendency, that's where you determine the mean, which is the average of all the item, median, which is the score in the middle of a set, mode, which means the item who has most repeated appearance in the set. When we say standard deviation, this is the extent of the difference of the data from the mean. Moving forward, we have advanced quantitative analytical methods. Correlation uses statistical analysis to yield results that describe the relationship of two variables. 
for analysis of variance ANOVA used to determine if the difference in the means or averages of two categories of data are statistically significant. Regression shows the nature of relationship of variables and gives more extensive results than that of correlation. It also determines whether a variable is capable of predicting the strength of the relation between independent variable and the dependent variable. So to find whether there is a significant difference between samples, we have here paired sample p-test. By the way, when we say parametric, this is usually used to test data that are in the interval and ratio levels of measurement. And for non-parametric, you test data that are ordinal or nominal categorical data. And then here are the following analysis tools. Okay, that's it. For finding significant relationship between variables, when you only find relationship between two variables, we use Pearson's R coefficient of correlation. But when we find significant relationship more than two variables, we usually use multiple regression. Right now, I'm going to show you how to code and analyze your data. I'm going to teach you how you could transfer data from survey questionnaire to a computer file using Microsoft Excel. So the first step is to code your data. When we say coding, you convert words into numbers. Let's say your nominal categorical data is a gender. So the male stands for one as your numerical conversion. F stands for two as your code. For age, maybe you have five age bracket. So let's say your population is from ages 16 to 30. So your first age bracket is 16. And the next thing is you have to code each age bracket so you already have a code for your items so you are now ready to start transferring the information to this microsoft excel first respondent of course you stand it as one and one Okay, R stands for respondent. And how many respondents do you have? Let's say you have 90 respondents. And then next, you determine now the gender of each respondent. One stands for male and two stands for female. And then you start coding the age bracket of your respondents. In order for you to easily distinguish your categories, you use color code. You are now ready to code their responses to your items. So let's say you have two parts or two variables. First variable, part A, second variable, part B. For the part A, you use the code A. For the part B, you use the code B. Statement, you use the code F. Then item number, of course, the number itself. Let's say you use four-point Likert scale. So you have four-point only. Strongly agree to strongly disagree without using the neutral. And then you start encoding their responses. You do the same way to the part B variable. After that, you total the sum. Just drag it down. Usually, Microsoft Excel doesn't have data analysis over here. Therefore, you go to the file and click Options. 
to provide add-ins and click check box of analysis tool pack. Once you have your data analysis, you now have your analysis tools to use for statistical treatment. The next thing that you have to do is to click the data analysis in which we start analyzing the two variables. Click correlation. It says here input range. So in this case, we are going to determine part A and part B relation. Click part B. Click your shift button part A. You still hold the shift. You start clicking the control button and then click the arrow so you select all the responses where do you want to see the result output range beside the data we just click somewhere here and then you could see the data over there click ok so it says there you have 0 0.57 40, 25. So here is the interpretation. The closer your correlation coefficient is to positive 1 or negative 1, then the more closely the two variables are related. But if your correlation coefficient is closer to 0, then it means that there is no correlation. If this is your result, 0 0.57, is it closer to 0 or closer to 1? That is closer to 1, right? So that means to say that there is a correlation between your part A and part B. But if your result is closer to 0, that means there is no correlation between them. The usual results are 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and so on and so forth. So here is a strength of relationship between two tests. 0 0.002, 0 0.20, 0 the strength of relationship is poor. 0 0.21, to 0.40, the strength of relationship is fair. 0.41 to 0.60, the strength of relationship is moderate. 0.61 to 0.80, the strength of relationship is substantial. 0.81 to 1.00, the strength of relationship is almost perfect. There you go. I hope you understand how to find significant relationship between two variables. Okay, right now we will determine which item has the highest rank. Let's say your part A has seven items. You determine now which among the items is the highest. We use descriptive statistics. Click Descriptive Statistics, and then your input range. Don't forget to click Labels in first row. Where do you want to see your output? You click Output Range. Click this one beside the data. You click any, any cell. Don't forget to click Summary Statistics. It's easier to know the median, mode, standard deviation, and then the mean for each item of the part A. So the first one that you have to do is you transfer the label, aligning it to the result. Okay, it's easier to see, right? So here's the mean of the first. So right now you're going to determine which item ranks the highest okay take a look on that and as i can see this is the highest put a rank label here okay there you go you have your mean your median mode and then the standard deviation 
you just get all the results and transfer it to your thesis file. Okay, so this is how you present the data result in your research paper. Here are the following statements by which you find out the mean and then its rank and then its verbal interpretation. How can you determine the verbal interpretation for each item? Here's the scale for each verbal interpretation. 3.26 to 4, that interprets strongly agree. 2.51 to 3.25, that is agree. 1.76 to 2.50, disagree. And then 1.1 to 1.75 is strongly disagree. In a given instance, your first item has three weighted mean and therefore it's at the middle of 2.51 to 3.25 that has its verbal interpretation of agree. Remember to also find out the average weighted mean and then its verbal interpretation. After finding out which one is the highest, you know interpret this way. Looking closely to the table item per item, it has observed that the students used PowerPoint presentation through laptop and smart television, and it has the highest average weighted mean among the 10 items and interpreted as strongly agree. After you've written a report for its analysis, you now provide a supporting literature on the said result. Okay, to find the significant difference between the two, whether there is a significant difference or no significant difference at all between the two variables, you use t-test. Let's go to data analysis and find t-test paired to sample for me. Your variable one is part A. Let's click the whole responses. So how are we going to interpret the following numbers? To determine whether there is a significant difference, you take a look at the t-test stat. The result is 4.34. Your standard alpha is 0 0.05. If the result is less than 0 0.05, we accept our null hypothesis, which is that there is no significant difference. But if your t stat value is greater than 0 0.05, then we reject our null hypothesis that there is no significant difference. And therefore, the interpretation is there is a significant difference between two variables. Let's see if the t stat value is greater than 0 0.05. Your t stat value is 4.34. Is it greater than 0 0.05 or less than 0 0.05? It is greater than 0 0.05. So if it is greater than, we reject our null hypothesis and therefore the interpretation is there is a significant difference between our part A and part B. That's it. I hope you learned something from our discussion today.